Shalom family. In this video, we're going to talk all about the five flavors of tea. And so it's important because in African herbalism, tastes are important. They tell you so much about what the herb does and where it works in the body. But then also you need to know how the herbs taste so you can be able to blend them. So I'm going to give you a little crash course into how to make the perfect teas. I also have linked down below recommended viewing. So after you watch this, I have more videos about my TEA method which you really want to learn also so that you can make the best tea or any blend every single time. All right, so let's just go ahead and get into it. The first taste is sour, and this is one of my favorite elements that I like to add into a lot of my teas. If you have any of my books, Herbal Holistic Healing, Everyday Herbs, you see my formulas and my teas, and I have multiple different tastes. And a lot of times I do add like a little sour element. Now what does the sour element do into the body? So if you think about eating like a sour fruit, like a citrus fruit, that's one of my favorite elements to add into some of my teas. You see that it kind of tightens your um, mouth. It kind of is more drying. And so in the body and the organs, that can be a good thing because it can help to tighten and tone them to make sure they're strong. Like if you think of a strong muscle, the same way uh, we want all of our muscles in our body to be nice and strong and firm, pretty much like just how we got them. Hopefully we can prolong their longevity. And so these sour herbs really help to strengthen. Another thing about these sour herbs is a lot of times they work on the heart, especially some of the sour herbs have other elements in them, like flavones, which are really beneficial for heart health. And so some of my favorites, I do like to use like lemon. I love grapefruit because we're so used to having like lemons and oranges and limes even now. They've gotten a lot more popular. But grapefruits, we don't really, that's a different taste. It's more unexpected when it comes to tea. So I like to use the grapefruit as well. And then sometimes instead of even using lemons, I like to use like a lemongrass or a lemon balm. So I have that little tartness of the fruit and then i have some you know a different taste with it as well so sour really important a lot of times we think that our fruits or our berries are sweet but a lot of times they're tart or they may have other layers of flavor i feel like our palates really like sweet i feel like sour is a really good taste for those who don't like you know, don't really have a wide enough palate and they can really only appreciate like sweet, they might be able to appreciate some of our sour herbs as well. So sour, very important, very strengthening uh, and toning to the different organs as it goes throughout the body. It's given that effect and tends to be more drying and sometimes we really need that effect in the body. Next we have pungent. So pungent is like it sounds like a punch in the mouth and, and sometimes it can be really spicy but it, it, it's even more than that uh sometimes it can be a little bit mm, uncomfortable so some some flavors that are pungent might be ginger and i would say that's more palatable but then just eating raw garlic it's like oh uh, it's a little bit it might be a little bit too much and so but that flavor it really does something like as soon as you put it in your mouth even sometimes smelling it just like if you think if you're cutting onions and it's just like oh my eyes are watering, my nose is, is running. They It just really helps to, again, kind of cut through all the liquids and all that. It moves to the body really quickly. And sometimes you can use these herbs to increase the potency of other herbs and also for circulation because it really just gets everything going. It gets your juices flowing. And so it's really important also for digestion. So it's something you really shouldn't sleep on. And these herbs usually are in smaller quantity, but they pack a punch. Next, we have our sweets. So everyone knows about sweets. A lot of times people even really like sweets or they're like salty. I'm a person who just loves sweets. And so too much sugar, you know, is a bad thing. And it really can affect different organs in the body. But when you have these naturally sweet herbs, it actually benefits these parts of the body. And so when we have like these sweets, you notice it's really moist and they, you know, even make your mouth water. And so these herbs tend to be more moistening to the body, which is really useful because a lot of herbs are drying or typically drying to the body. So we need to know uh, what we can use to add more moisture if needed. And so these are really kind of nourishing too to the body. A lot of our like adaptogens have like more of this building kind of ability about it. And so the sweet is really important. The other reason why these sweet herbs are important is because they help to naturally balance blood sugar. So a lot of the different foods 
just on foods alone, we'd be able to manage and ward off most illnesses and even chronic illnesses like diabetes. You could manage your blood sugar regularly just by having these herbs that are sweet or even the herbs that we usually use in our, you know, sweeter beverages or our baking. We just use those herbs and get rid of the sugar. We're actually benefiting our body and benefiting these parts of our body. And so the sweet is actually, other than just tasting good, it really does wonderful things in the body. So some of these herbs stevia i really love if cinnamon i really love for anyone that's struggling with anything related to um, blood sugar the sugar or sweet herbs are really beneficial for that i want to give a disclaimer i'm naming these herbs but you want to make sure you do your own research and if you have any underlying conditions you take medications you really want to be mindful of contraindications going forward so whenever i share information about herbs it's just for I'd say the best case scenario, the average person. But if your health is not, you know, if you're if you have health issues, you want to make sure you do your due diligence first before you use anything. Okay. So if you have a problem to where now it's not just managing the blood sugar, now you have a problem producing insulin, it's a little bit different. So these herbs might not be for you. So okay. Next, we have our salty. So sweet and salty, those are some people's favorite tastes. And the salty just is really mineral rich. These are our nutrient rich herbs. A lot of times I notice like a salty and maybe like an earthy flavor, they kind of go together. And so there's some herbs that I really love for this. I really love horsetail because it just has so many different minerals, um, calcium, magnesium, some of these herbs like nettle with potassium and different vitamins and minerals. And so they're really supportive to the body as well. Um, and these are plants that typically are very dark green in color too. So nettles, horsetail, uh, so many different herbs. Now, some of these herbs, these salty herbs can actually have like natural salt in them. So like our seaweeds as well, our kelp, our adults, those actually do have natural salt in them. And so if you have a problem with using too much salt, then I would use some of these natural salts instead of that. And I'm not against salt because salt, again, has so many minerals. And so that salty taste lets you know, yeah, there's a lot, there's tons of different minerals and whatnot in here. Um, and so the salt is good. We're the salt of the earth. So, but in moderation. So if you have a problem with salt, you love that salty taste, kind of try to make some more natural alternatives because natural is always going to be better and you want to get it with color. So no white especially not our iodized salt that you get in the store, no table salt. Um, but if you can get away from the white sea salt and use some of the um, crystals of salt, the bigger crystals as well, because it's just broken, it's broken down a little bit less and processed a little bit less. But I like Himalayan sea salt, but there's also nice black salts and everything like that. And those are good to go. And then the last one is bitter. Now, a lot of people don't love bitter, but bitter is one of the best flavors to have when you're really trying to repair your body. So bitters are all about stimulating digestion, getting it going, and working on some of the organs in our digestive system. And so there's so many different nerves connected in the gut. And so when we talk about the gut health, it's also about the brain health and other parts of the body as well. Don't neglect the bitter taste for myself personally, I like a little bit of bitterness to things. And so I like to, when I have salads, I like to have things like arugula that's a little bit peppery. You may have some bitter herbs, like I like to add in some broken up pieces of dandelion in it. And it's really good. And even for the people who would say, oh, no, I can't eat that in small bits and pieces. Like I made a salad for my husband and it had a little dandelion in it. And I waited to see his response and he didn't have one. He didn't notice it. So just little things like that and a little bit of bitterness can be really beneficial for you and you won't even really notice it. So with the bitter flavor, we see biblical accounts of having bitter herbs with meat. And so the bitterness can kind of, we know that meats are not the best thing for us and it does have some negative side effects or drawbacks that come with it. So traditionally you've seen the use of spices with them and some of the spices help to get rid of parasites or fung funguses and bacteria and all of that that can be on meat and then also you see the use of bitter herbs with them also aiding in digestion because the meat takes longer to break down and so 
it's really important to incorporate some bitters. So we have some bitters that are called true bitters that are just, just bitter. Wormwood would be one of those. And again, in the Bible, you see about wormwood. Uh, but there's other herbs like dandelion that are, you know, real bitter. And then you have some herbs that are bittersweet. So like burdock. And there's some herbs that like valerian, that's a bitter herb, but it has like a aromatic kind of like perfume like taste to me. And so there's different levels and degrees. And so if you want to incorporate any of these tastes, you can always go for one that's a little bit more mild and then work yourself up. I want to encourage you guys not to just have one different flavor profile when you make your teas. Yes, you always want to have at least two, but I'd say about three different flavors. All right, so these are the five flavors. I know that some will say, well, what about the floral? Or what about this or that? I'm using these five just based on this African foundation and the way that I teach. But some of the other flavors of different things, like let's say calendula. It's a flower, and I guess it has a floral taste, but it goes more into the salty for me. And then also bitterness, if you steep it longer or if you have the bottom parts of the, the flower. And so... The floral tastes can be grouped into these elements. So any of the other tastes that you might think about can all be grouped under one of these headings. Like a chamomile could go under sweet. And so you know kind of um, what, you know, what more uh, they're doing. But then it also goes under bitter when you steep the chamomile longer. It does have a quite bitter profile. So I would say it fits more even under the bitter heading. All right, so I hope that this video was helpful for you, giving you guys a crash course into some of the different flavor profiles and encouraging you to make really wonderful teas using my TEA method, taste, texture, time, energetics, and affinity. All right, so let me know what you guys want to see down below. I have some resources down for you in the description box, so do check them out as far as links and all of that inside as well. And I'll see you guys in the next one.